Hi everyone, Brett plays with guns here at Instagram. Uh, as you can see, this is a impromptu video being made from my bed uh, due to the fact that I am on bed rest from spine surgery. Um, the videos will be uh, a little bit longer in the coming because of the amount of time it takes to heal and a secondary surgery that'll be coming with it. But today we'll be going over some simple 10 level stuff that most soldiers don't actually read because you're taught a weapon, you're issued a weapon, you're, you fire the weapon and suddenly you're an expert. You holster it, you clean it, you fire it, holster, clean or fire. And that's just the way it works. You turn it in, you expect your armorer, who is a unit level armorer, to be able to do all these functions and repair and inspect. But that's just not the case. The armorer keeps track. The armorer denotes deficiencies and uh, broken parts on weapons that you point out to your unit armorer. Or if you're a civilian, it's uh, issues that you observe and that you have to try and correct. Now today we're working with the Beretta 92FS. Um, everything here is going to be able to compute over to the M9. Uh, I'm using my everyday carry weapon. Uh, I have multiple uh, carry weapons, but this happens to be my favorite because it's what I still carry in the line of duty. While I will be retiring soon, I have been training on this for the better part of 10 years. Now, as you can see, there's a magazine inserted it. There are different grips than what you would see um, if you were carrying overseas, carrying garrison, carrying the line of duty or using Leosa to carry offhand. Uh, for more information about Leosa, we'll touch upon that in another video, but these grips actually come from gungrips.net. Um, they have been around for a while. I beta test for them. I have maybe 14 different pairs and I put them through some rigorous testing, which we'll go over in another video as well. Uh, they last, they work well. Um, I've worked with Wicked Grips as well, and they have some excellent grips. Uh, my personal favorite is Gun Grips just because they have such a wide selection and you can customize. You can send them a photo and they'll do it for you on any type of grip you'd like for just about any weapon. But let's get back to the task at hand. Uh, here we are with the... Uh, Beretta 92FS 9mm. What I'm going to do is what always should be done. Point the gun in a safe direction away from you or anybody else. Ensure that it's clear. The safety is obviously on. The weapon is pointed away from me. We're going to adjust our hand because unless you have giant meaty paws, and I mean I can do it as well, but for tactical reload purposes, let's stick with the good habit of taking the weapon and inverting it. See, my palm, I slightly rotate it, dropping the mag. This way I retain control of the weapon and I also have a better method than just keeping it pointed out and trying to fumble and reload a magazine. Now that it's inverted, you take the second mag and you put it in. Now you can see this is clearly loaded. This is what I carry. So I pulled it out of my holster and I put those in a separate box. When I like to work on firearms, just for demonstrating purposes or inspection purposes, I have three boxes. One for dummy rounds, one for the weapon and parts, one for the live ammunition or anything that should be uh, either going back to the weapon or being repaired on the weapon. That may be a fourth box if there's, a ma if there's major issues, not just a spring that I might have on the side. Now, magazine's out, we're gonna rack it back. I've seen a lot of people do this, hand over, fingers over. There's no point in that because all you're doing is putting tension on, these, uh, on the safety levers, the safety selector switch. Now, you may not know who I am, but if you've read my biography or if you're new to the channel, I am a small arms repairer for over six years I'm a weapons expert with the Department of Defense and Department of Military and Naval Affairs. Um, 
basically it computes to a higher level gunsmith um, or a master level gunsmith once I retire and certify. Oh, let's not leave the TV on when we're doing a video. Thank you, South Park. <laughs> so, you do not charge the weapon like this. And for anybody who carries, you should know that there's going to be a round in this chamber. But it's hard to tell. This little lever right here, your extractor, um, is going to show that it's going to be bulged out a little bit. That shows that there's a round in the chamber. My finger has not gone anywhere near the trigger. The weapon is not glass. It's not going to kick off on its own. I'm not going to be drop it and have rounds kick off. This is a single action, double action rifle. The hammer is not back. The safety is on. I can cock the hammer back, send it forward. The safety rotates the ability to knock the firing pin into the um, uh, cartridge. So there's no fear. But regardless, we still maintain safe. Um, even if it was clear, we'd still be maintaining safe habits. Hand does not go in front of the barrel. Finger is not on the trigger. Uh, weapon is pointed away from you. Because even though it does have one in the chamber now, just so I can show you that this bulges out when there's one in the chamber, your extractor, this little lever right here. If you have one, look at it with the round in the chamber, even just a dummy round. And also uh, when it's empty. And it'll be able to show you. So, racking it back by the safety in a fix is no problem but if you do it every time you wear these down these are only held in by small little metal pins these are not meant to be ruggedized like that back when i was a young pup in basic training a drill sergeant taught me a long time ago that you follow the rail system there are these two grooves at the end that kind of inlet they uh they're much thinner, and what you do is you take your knuckle, put it on the side of that groove, and you see this groove right here, I put my thumb. Now I'm going to chicken wing. My arm is going to be like this. I'm going to wrap my hand, I'm going to push downwards, and I'm going to pull backwards. That is the best and most effective method. And in fact, I do it even when I tactically reload or when I'm in the field. So let's clear the weapon. There goes the round. Now, the round we have in here right now is a subsonic 9mm Luger. It's just whatever your preference is to carry for whatever the purpose of carrying is. I don't want to send a round through multiple people. I live in New York. Um, if I were going to be in a crowded area, I have to worry about um, backdrop. Actually, you always have to worry about backdrop, but regardless, you don't want rounds penetrating walls, so you don't want full metal jacket. You don't want these, uh, you know, plus P, um, extremely fast, heavy uh, loaded, uh, heavy grain rounds running through uh, people and over penetrating and catching the person behind them. So I'll use a subsonic or I'll use a, a Hornady round. Um, for those of you who don't know, Hornady is great for... Uh, they kind of design them for like clearing buildings. They don't pass through multiple walls. They try, they uh, hopefully they don't pass through more than one person. But I digress. You'll see on this side of the weapon, there's actually a grip here for when I'm not wearing uh, gloves. We all know high stress situations, you start to sweat. Your fingers have natural oils on them. So I took one of those mag uh, magazine. Uh, grip stickers and put it right here now, I have one on the other side, but from using certain cleaner cleaning products it came off It still makes it easy even without these I do it this way but I rack the weapon I lock it. I make sure that the uh, chamber is clear. I make sure that the barrel is no obstructions I look through the magwell. I now know that my my weapon is empty and safe now, the movies will show you, and a lot of people do this, even on the expert channels, and I will tell you this. Do not use your slide stop 
to send your slide forward. It's a slide stop, not a slide release. This is not what you would press to send your slide forward. That's why if you look in the manual, it says this is called a slide stop. What you do is you simply pull the weapon back again and it's released. Do the same thing. For those of you in a hurry, Yes, you can pull on the safeties. They're not gonna break, but eventually those pins are gonna give out if you do it every time. If you're on the range a lot, if you're overseas, if you're constantly shooting, qualling, or teaching, uh, this is an open barrel system. You don't want your hand over it. You're gonna get snake bit. You're gonna get skin pulled off here. Your glove's gonna get caught in there. Grab the front, release it. Now let's do a quick safety check. Pull the trigger. You notice the safety comes up. This little lever comes up. You hear nothing. You see nothing. No uh, movement from the hammer. Switch the safety selector up. You see the red dot. Now in the military we say red is dead. So that lets you know that you're ready to rock and roll. What we're going to do is we're going to pull the trigger to the rear. Fires. Pull the trigger. Again, slowly releasing it until you hear a click. As soon as you hear that trigger reset, you pull it again to make sure that your trigger spring and uh, the other internal components are working correctly so that on a trigger reset, you do not have a failure. You half cock to make sure the weapon actually goes into half cock. What I do is I Squeeze the trigger again, release it, full cock, release it. Now I don't let go of the trigger. I'm going to rack the weapon while still maintaining the trigger to test the hammer. You should hear this click. That's part of your safety. Uh, that's part of your um, test to make sure that the weapon is ready to go. If it passes functions, functions check and the firing pin resets, then you are good. If you do not hear that click, contact your local gunsmith, your manufacturer, or look in the manual for instructions on what to do. Now, lastly, if you see, now I'm going to go ahead and go against safety and point the weapon towards me. That little circle in the rear is what gets knocked forward and sends the uh, firing pin. When you rotate, this is the last part, when you rotate the safety, you see it moving. The safety selector switch takes that offline and lets the hammer fall. Now, the hammer cocked back, you can see that there is no longer any means of sending that firing pin forward. So even if there was a round in the chamber, you could do this all day and nothing's gonna happen um so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick takedown of the weapon depress the plunger slide down the, the uh, lever on the side lay the weapon in your container notice my hand has been on the spring weapons tend to release these springs are not held in by uh, you know, latches and whatnot. They're just into grooves that hold them in place. Springs have tension. They have to be under tension for the mechanics to work. Once you let go, this is going to shoot across the room and you're going to go swimming on the floor looking for the pieces. So let's try and avoid that. We, I, while keeping my finger over the spring, I depress it and I slowly release it. Now what I wanted to go over today is a simple thing. This is what soldiers ought to be checking for. One, that trigger reset that we discussed. Two, this spring. Now you can see this is well lubricated. I always, the way I check my weapons is whether it's Glock, whether it's Walter, Sig, uh, whether it's this Beretta. If you rack the weapon back and you don't see any lubricant on that uh, barrel, or um, 
especially in the case of Glock with the uh, square um, square barrel where it locks into place. If that's wiped clean and you rack it back and there's a thin lip of uh, lubricant on the top, you're fine. They say they will fire dry. They will not. Now I can tell you, uh, they may, but they're going to eventually jam up. Weapons are tools. Tools need to be maintained. Everything in life is maintenance. Guns are no different. So this spring has to be over five inches or you're going to start seeing weapon failure. Now, that is everyone's biggest fear. If you're in combat and you're resorting to a pistol and you're, fi and you're not um, you know, out of rounds, then you're in a pretty desperate situation. Uh, out of rounds for your rifle, then you're in a pr pretty desperate situation. Things have gotten really hairy. If you're not checking and maintaining that firearm, or even on the street, you carry the same weapon every day and you've had it in your holster and you know you take it out at night and clear it and put it in the rack uh, for two months, you know, that uh, lubricant that you had in the weapon has been seeping into the leather in the holster or dripping down the kydex or if you've kept it in your car in a safe or on a magnet or any of those new uh, holsters they have for in the vehicle and then reholstered it on your person that heat from the vehicle or that cold is that lubricant is sliding out of the weapon you need to check at least once a week once every two weeks that this weapon is properly maintained and lubricated you need to ensure that every time you finish firing this or um every couple of months even if you use it or not check your springs check everything your weapon is your life. If you're pulling your weapon, odds are there's a pretty good reason that you have to use it. So if this becomes five inches or just about five inches or less, replace it. It's inexpensive. It costs almost nothing. Most people don't even pay attention to this, but it is in the manual right there in your preventative met, uh, your PMCS. Um, so slide the metal back in. I know for a fact this is over five inches because I just went over the weapon. If it wasn't, I would have put it to the side and out of my reserve, I would have taken another. But if you were anybody else, you could have ordered directly from Beretta, gone to your local gunsmith, gone to your local gun store, um, went on eBay, contacted me with any questions, concerns, um, complaints, uh, whatever you want to know send me a message um most of the time i can't give an elaborate enough answer in the comments so i try to either talk one-on-one -on -one with you i try to uh do a talk to text or a voice memo um and i try to ensure that you fully comprehend what i'm telling you because this is a tool meant to save your life so before we put it back together, there's one other thing that I always get grief for, but I have worked on these for six years and I have never seen it happen. And if it does happen, then I'm going to pay the price and I'm going to buy a new lower receiver. But <laughs> remember that trigger reset we were talking about? The same goes for when it's taken down as when the web, as when the, uh, the uh, rail and the uh, top assembly is still in place. When you squeeze that trigger, you need to ensure that it's going to work every time. If you want to know if it's going to be failing soon, you do it here. Now, people, other gun experts or other uh, gunsmiths, always say if you let this hammer, and then we're about to watch it drop, fall right there. It's going to cause cracks. I have never seen a crack. And I've worked with weapons that were over 10 years, had been had thousands of rounds put through them, more than tens of thousands of rounds put through them. They were so worn down that I had to replace almost everything on them. And even some of them I had to uh, send in for complete replacement because they could not be repaired. And they didn't even crack when I did that. So... 
that is just a method because I still haven't released the trigger of testing your reset. If those springs are going to go soon, you'll find out now. That doesn't mean they're going to go. See this? I let it all the way out to reset. That's why I chose this particular firearm. Now, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's going out to reset and it's not resetting. Now, that can be the side uh, trigger bar, which is a spring on the right side of the weapon, right inside the grip, but it usually is not. It's usually the trigger assembly. So, while that is an easy fix, I don't re recommend you do it at home because your life counts on this weapon. So, what we need to do now is I need to order a new spring set because I have put so many rounds through this weapon that it's not resetting, letting me squeeze my trigger. I have to actually actively release it hard. But this should be resetting. There's that little click, but nothing. Now, I pull the spring, hear the click. I'm sorry, trigger, I pull the trigger. You hear the click. Squeeze it again. Now that tells me that maybe not next week, maybe not next month, maybe sometime in the next year, even the following year, because the weight of the upper slide assembly is going to keep that uh, trigger spring moving. But this tells me this is in the early stages of failure of that spring. And some people are going to say it's not a big deal. And I'll tell you, you can probably finish an entire tour of duty because right now, if you're, uh, if you're outside the wire and you have to resort to this, you probably don't have too much ammunition for this. Um, if it's just doing that simply like it is on takedown, it's going to work well. You don't have to panic, but it's something you should fill out on a 2404 and inform your armorer. And once you get your weapon back, or if you're a civilian, Order the new spring. Bring it to your uh, gunsmith. He may say, oh, don't worry about that. Well, I can tell you for a guy who's worked on thousands of these for six years repetitively over and over and over and am considered an expert and worked with over 19 or more units on firearms strictly alone. This is something to pay attention to. Um... If your armor is going to be uh, difficult about it in your unit, go a level higher. If you need to contact me, go into the go into the um, uh, description, go into the uh, uh, the contact us, and I will reach out to you via telephone, and I will speak to whoever you need me to speak to. I will give my credentials. Um, I have yet to retire as I'm still on bed rest, but I will be medically retired soon. Um, thank you, Army. <laughs> and uh, I will explain my position and what this is and how many of them I've worked on. And if need be, I will draft a uh, memo on letterhead requesting and explaining what's going on. I've written many reports to take on. And I have sent up many uh, memos regarding certain weapon issues that many people don't find to be an issue, but I believe in preventative fixing. Not as, hey, the weapon's broken, let's fix it now. It's no, the weapon's about to break. That soldier could potentially be in danger. If he deploys tomorrow, uh, is this a good weapon for him to have? Or, same thing for uh, civilians. Do you want to be carrying this on your person, knowing that it could fail? So that's why I chose this. I'm really happy that I was able to show you a failure. Uh, even though the two most common ones, which would be this and this, uh, we only got to see the one. These are not expensive fixes. They are not very time consuming. You just need the right tools, a punch set, um, 
a little know-how and uh, patience. So go ahead, get yourself some separating boxes, put the new pieces, the, your new parts in one, the weapon in the other, obviously lay them flat, not on an angle like I'm doing for the video. And um, with a gunsmith, just go over the weapon, ask if you can watch while he fixes it. Um, most may say no, but if you want me to make a video of the fix, um, I likely will. Uh, I have no problem with that. It's going to be edited for time, obviously, time constraints. Um, like I said, just make sure that you're safe out there. Make sure that your weapon is in proper working order. Um, if you want cool guy grips like I have, you can go to uh, gungrips.net and um, you'll be able to customize or pick out from their templates for whatever firearm you have some pretty neat grips uh, they have everything from wood grain to um, metal black metal to aluminum to uh, pearl and wood uh, different color wood um, now this is not me doing a sales pitch I'm not sponsored by them I just personally like them I have them on my 1911s I have them on my M9 uh, but the most important thing is be safe all right Brett plays with guns out.